<laughs> NFL Total Access. Fun week of regular season. Let's go. Can you believe it? We went through 10 weeks already. Entering week 11 right now. Uh, pretty crazy. The season flew by. Like, flu, literally flu. flew by. Flew, flew. Uh, lots of exciting playoff implications to go. <sighs> Yeah. Some divisions we already know who's in, but not all of them. Uh, I had a few like pretty interesting topics I wanted to go over. Like, remember that uh, you probably didn't watch the episode I had with Simon, but we had a pretty long intro. We spoke about some cool stuff. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But I feel we're gonna have a jam-packed episode with uh, all these uh, who's in and who's not. So we'll attack the divisions right away. Yeah. And if we have time at the end, we'll talk about it. If not, it'll, we'll save these topics for uh, uh, another episode. Good call. Uh, but before we get to it, I just want to remind everyone that uh, the time, the exact time that your team will be playing is already, uh, has already been determined. Uh, your captain got that info at the beginning of the season. I also posted in the MFL players chat, I think midway through the season. Uh, also remember, you need five games played to be playoff eligible. Remind you of this next week before your first playoff game. Um, anything else? Mm. We have for the first time ever a finals day. So like all finals games, we have, we'll have our, all our six finals that will be played back to back throughout the entirety of the day on August 3rd, all going to be at the Bear Park. None of them at the same, the same time. None of them at the same time. Nice. There's no, divi- there's no two divisions ever playing at the same time throughout the entirety of the playoffs. There's always only, only one game. No, no. Never two divisions playing at the same time. So if there's multiple games at the same time, oh, same division. they'll always be the same division mm. to ensure that no player would ever have to choose between two teams. And this ensures absolutely no conflicts. And that's why we do this at the beginning of the season. And you make sure you have three months to make sure you uh, don't got to work or do anything else important. Um, so yeah, August 3rd, mark your calendars. Uh, more information to come, but it's going to be a special day. Yeah, we have a few things uh, lining up, and uh, I'm excited to share the information once we can. Okay, nice. Um, besides that, anything else you want to say? Uh, that's going to be cool. Like you said, some nice four uh, four games. You get a little exception, depending this, that, the other thing, right? Yeah, but it has to be a written exception. Uh, if you had injuries or whatnot, just make sure you have it written. Mm-hmm. Uh, we only give those exce- exceptions after the regular season ended. Right. Also, fall registration is up and open. Uh, nice. This time next week, the ratings will be calculated. Um, so you can see how well you did in the spring and how much your rating went up or down. We calculate the ratings be- be- after the regular season before the playoffs. Okay, and when does that season start? August 17th. Oh, wow, okay. So it will be one week off in between seasons. August 10th will be probably the get-together. Yeah, yeah. Uh, there's an Alouette against Ticats game, I think, that night. Go on. So we'll probably watch it at uh, John's Friends Bar. Nice. And uh, well, to-, to be confirmed, we'll-, we'll let you know when we confirm the location. Yeah. And uh, his cousin? Just cousin. Son's his brother? I thought it was his sister. It's probably John. <laughs> what you need to do? Uh, but yeah, we're probably... So week 10, the weekend of week 10, 11, there won't be any MFL. Sorry for everyone who's going to be very sad about that. But we feel maybe one week in between seasons is, is, is a good break. Because then uh, the fall season for Montreal starts August 17th. The fall season for Brawl starts, starts August 18th. And then August 25th, Laval starts. Oof. And all those seasons will run up until the, November. The Montreal Finals for the fall will be November 16th this year. Come on. So get your shovels ready. <laughs> November 16th? Snow, snowstorm. It was about the same date last year. I think last year was the 18th. So it's about the same weekend, but given the dates, I think it's a few days earlier on the calendar. But that's, I think last cool. year was uh, 18th or 19th, something like that. Damn nice. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, that's it. Get, let us know if you're coming back in the fall. Uh, we understand you want to wait to see the ratings calculated. Uh, I, mean, I, I guess I could go through the, the new ratings because we, we shared these ratings with... Uh, Team captains already are tentative ratings, like we like to call them, because they're not mm. confirmed yet. They'll be set in stone once we recalculate the ratings. Then we'll uh, send an email confirmation. Uh, no, we're gonna post it on our Facebook page actually, but it'll also be up on the website and in the rule book. Um, you saw the issue we had with Division Two this year, right? Like the kind of non-existent slash Division One B in Division Two, mm-hmm. and a lot of people were saying that like we could have made six divisions. Division Four was pretty large, so essentially what's happening is that. Uh, division three is becoming the new division two. Okay. So you could see like maybe a good half, if not the three quarters of the top teams in division three would be moving up to division two, theoretically. Like, okay. And uh, the top half, you could kind of split the four into two divisions, like the four A, the four B. Right. The four A would be division three. Right. The four B would be the four. Yeah. And this year we did a great job of ensuring a good competitive beginner division five. And that division, I think would remain somewhat the same mm-hmm. so with the ratings and what i just said you can see that's how it kind of translates like 
Uh, Division 2's cap was 990 this year. Mm. Division 3's cap was 930. The new Division 2 okay. cap will be 950. So right above the old Division 3 cap. Hmm. So, Makes uh, sense. Yeah, so we want... Division 3 is a very competitive and strong division. Mm-hmm. We think a lot of teams can make the jump from 3 to 2. And by doing this, it ensures that like they'll be competitive in Division 2 because a lot of those Division 2... Tool, a lot of the few Division 2 teams uh, are going to have to make huge roster... Uh, business decisions mm-hmm. if they like to stay in Division 2 or those teams could just get a few Division 1 players and move up as well right yeah true. spread the wealth and uh, create more division like right now we have 9 total Division 1 and 2 teams yeah that's but a lot of those players play on both in both divisions I think we probably have at least maybe 6 uh, 7 maybe 7 teams that are that we could create with all those players in one division mm-hmm. uh, so yeah we'd like to have like a slightly larger Division 1 and then 2 to 5 that are more competitive with at least a dozen teams. And who knows, maybe we'll have Centurions come back, Goku come back. Jagerbomb, Idaho, yeah, Jagerbomb, nice true. Ds. Yeah, true, true. A lot of these teams. Yeah. So far, it's as if uh, you go up the tunnel, then you exit, and then uh, you have 20 more teams <laughs> entering from the bottom yeah. of the tunnel. <laughs> so, uh... It's true, a lot of teams missed out this year, eh? Yeah. Wow. But still, we had a healthy league. Yeah, 61 teams. Just in Montreal. Another 12 in Brossard. Good stuff, Miguel. Let's see what Laval brings us. Yeah. <laughs> All right, let's get to it. Yes. I'm feeling uh, generous. Uh, I'll let you decide the division we start with. Start first, with? Yeah. Let's start with Div 3 to get it the heck out of the way. Right? <laughs> okay. Good call. Thank you. So, uh, Div 3 is pretty simple. Uh, the playoffs are... The playoff teams are set in stone. Just seeding now, eh? Just seeding. Uh, Double Doers had a chance to clinch that one seed. But they're actually in a very good position to still have that one seed right now. Uh, it's remarkable to see that... The top five teams have at least six victories. Com- oh, sorry, the top six teams have at least six wins coming into the last week of the regular season. Um, quickly recapping the games that were, you can see that... Uh, yeah, I guess we're going to start with our game get out of the way. Uh, yeah. Like, Nestor, it was unstoppable, basically. Like, it, it sums it up that like, you, we were not able to stop his running game. Nine for a buck of four, uh, three touchdowns. Uh, like, we just weren't able to stop him run. Like, he has to be one of the best runners in, in the division. Like, we have a few good runners, right? Yeah. And he goes definitely up there. We played against both of them. And uh, it, it's hard to argue that Nestor's not currently number one in the MFL. It's, yeah, it's that kind of like that just subtle hip movement. It's, right? that, it's, it's that full speed side hip. Yeah, that's the thing. And then back to uh, yeah. front. Losing no momentum whatsoever. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And you got to like credit too, like he threw a pick early on in the game and it's okay, you know, maybe it's going to, but he still tossed the ball uh, fairly well. 205 yards, right? He had a big, big fourth down conversion uh, where he threw to yeah. a wide open receiver that I should have been covering. <laughs> um, and uh, you look at the, the ball distribution here, you got a receiver with five catches, three, four, uh, two, you got one, two, three, four different players getting a touchdown in this game. So, well, he definitely is dual threat, and it was you know his, his legs that killed us more than anything. Yeah, Joshua Hernandez definitely being his number one target. You saw it the, that game you're seeing throughout the season. He has more than double the yards that the second receiver on the team has with 662 through 10 games, 15 tutties. Yeah. Um, but then you also have Cesar Garcia with nine touchdowns on the season. Um, yeah. So it's a really well-rounded team, and they could definitely make some noise in the playoffs. Uh, given that it's their first ever season in the NFL, mm. uh, like you can't not say it was not a success at this point, right? Totally, totally. I think look, they're gonna make it to uh, looking to make more noise once they get in, because right now they're uh, they're the sixth seed. Yeah, and they'd be playing a team like Lao. Like you see it, man. We're gonna have some great first round matchups in Division mm-hmm. Three. Yeah, but no, they're looking to win at least a game or two. I think that would be successful. Yeah. Uh, shockingly, well, I don't know if it's that shockingly, but I was expecting Double Dippers to win this one. Uh, Red Cats continuing their firepower offense, very prolific offense, scoring a lot of points, giving up a lot of points in D on D. But it's been a couple of games now where they scored over forty points and still managed to, uh, sorry, gave up over thirty points and still managed to get the dub. Um, it, it's hard as a quarterback when your defense is giving up score after score in like two, three plays and like long bombs. So kudos to Jason who. Still threw two picks this game and manages to win. 
But, yeah, but that's... I thought he was going to throw six. Remember, that was my, my bold prediction. There goes the... <laughs> he was going to throw six picks and, and win the game. Uh, he threw two and won the game. Yeah. Uh, it's, I've been really impressed with Jason, man. Like, on the, the way... Jason and this team, the way they find these weird ways to win... Uh, I'd love to sit back and watch one of these games because this 45, 41, 47, 46, these are my type of football games I like to watch. Um, just like, how do they have so much time to score these points? I guess, you know, they're going deep. Well, time stops on scoring plays. That's true. That's true. And I guess they're scoring, but they must be scoring like on, you know, 20, 30 plus yards at a time. Well, I'll tell you the touchdowns. Four yards, 35 yards, eight yards, 21 yards, 28 yards. Wow. Yeah, that was the first half touchdown. Really? And Devil Dippers, uh... Where does this put you doing power rankings now? I mean, we won't have too, too much time. Well, look, uh, I officiated the Double Dippers bin game at the end of the day. Yeah. After Double Dippers had played at 9 in the morning, they had another game at 4.30 p.m. Right. Okay. Uh, scorching hot day. Yes. And it was getting hotter by the minute. And they were most of their guys were there all day if and probably played a second, third, fourth game during the day. And this was a huge game for them. Battle for first place. Like Bin win this game. Bin are the ones sitting at 7-2. and two, And Double Dippers are the ones sitting at 6-3. and three. Um, True. So to pull this off after losing to Red Cats, uh, it just fucks up your power rankings even more to, yeah. to know where, where to place everyone. Look, uh, I, I think Bin's quarterback, JF, is dealing with an unfortunate injury late in the season. Mm. Uh, Mark Galini has quarterback before. Uh, it did not look that he was not the quarterback of this team, honestly. Like, it, it, like obviously, when you, when you get a quarterback that's injured... You always want to try to replace him from within. The chemistry is definitely there. Sometimes you can mm. maybe get a, a better quarterback from the outside, but the lack of that chemistry in the system might not be the better option overall. And I don't know if Bin's even considered that because they even have David Michaud on this roster who could throw. Uh, Simon Baudouin mm. could throw. They have a, a bunch of good options. Yeah, true. But um, Mark did a well enough job to win this game, and he definitely had that chemistry going with the team, knowing the system of the Bin. Also being a part of Binet, he had he threw a few games uh, for them in the past uh, season as well. But uh, look, this game was back and forth. 2020 at halftime, Damn. very low scoring second half. It took 10 minutes for double dippers to score. Like uh, a boxing match, somebody's got to feel your opponent out, and then uh, David Wilson dropped a, a a basket pass yeah. right into Manu's arms uh, to score a 45 yard bomb. Man, uh, Manu officially played enough games, right? To uh... no, he has not. Okay, oh, he hasn't. Eh? He's only sitting at three games. You have one game remaining. Uh, it's gonna be tough for him to get two games played in that last game. Yeah, that that would be. Uh, he's good, but I don't know if he's that good. It's not something we've never seen before with the the stats and uh, all that stuff. But yeah, uh... yeah true. But if, like, look, you could make the case that Red Cats are number one. Yeah. I know it's like they just narrowly beat Iron Wolves later on that day. Well, they, they're on a three-game win streak, right? Against Tigres, Double Dippers, and Iron Wolves. They're two solid teams. So looking at the standings now, um, who would you say is your number one? I have to go Red Cats. Really? Yeah. Because you have Double Dippers and double uh, standings-wise, Double Dippers are the are the one. But they're, they are one game. They only won one more game than Red Cats. But Red Cats just beat them. I think I have to give Red Cats the nod there. Um, then you have Ben, Laogd, Sooners, 6-3, six 6-3. And three, six and three. Red Cats, 6-3. You, you have to look at like how hot a team is too, right? Yeah, definitely. I'm not sure there's a team hotter than the Red Cats. Well, Lowell are pretty hot. Yeah, and that was a crazy finish in that game. You saw it? Yeah, I refed it. Oh, you refed it? Yeah, I oh, did. Um, you could make a case Lowell are number one also. How did they score on a Hail Mary last play? Like, who, who was guarding uh, Ben Fobar? It was double quarterback. Um, and uh, Simon threw it back. Uh, launched by... Guillaume? Guillaume, yes. Guillaume, also sick receiver. Holy cow, he made some crazy catches. A sick catches. defender. Yes. He's yes, currently leading really. the D3 in interceptions. Really? He's yeah. a good, good leader for the team. Um, and uh, just caught the ball and took a deep breath and launched it. They didn't... I don't think they sent the second uh, second rusher, which was the problem for um, for, for Phoenix. And uh, yeah, it was. It, it seemed a lot easier than it should have been. Ben just kind of was there and he boxed out his guy and caught it and it was in the end zone. And 
That was all she wrote. But there wasn't a tip or anything. No one was around him. There was it. There was people around him, but he did a good job like shielding the defenders. Even he wanted to watch the cats, basically. Yeah, and it was uh, it was impressive. A great toss, and even maybe a nicer catch, maybe even a greater toss. I'd say probably greater toss. Uh, it was a greater toss. Yeah, yeah. And uh, but that was an incredible game. Uh, very impressed with both teams. Um, impressed with Phoenix. How they 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 were a unit. That, that's, a, that's yeah, a, yeah. a team. You know what I mean? That's like everyone's. We, you can hate on Kevin as much as we want, but he's he's, he's a having team, a good year. But he's also a great teammate. That too. And uh, a, a fun guy to be around, right? When like he he just the ball well, and um, and he gets everyone involved. I was talking about it with I was talking with him about his D four team, and uh, in D four they're averaging ten points against the game, and I'm like, that's that's like crazy good. And he's like, yeah, I honestly don't know how our team's pulling it off. And then I look at the stats, I'm like, oh, it's very simple. You haven't thrown many pick sixes this year. So it wasn't like you had a bad defense. It was just that you were gifting points to the opposing team's offense with your offense on the field. Yeah, he, used to be a, he, used to, he used to be a solid one-for-one one, uh, TD to interception ratio. Like, I mean, like, yeah, I'll yeah. probably have, like, I'm, I'm going to go see, like, I, I don't think I'm exaggerating. Uh, okay, maybe more two-for-one. Well, 14 to 11, 39 to 21. I think it was more in D4 and D5 where okay. they always had better seasons in the higher division and weaker stats in like the lower division. Surprising. Right now, 30 for 9. Like 3 to 1 to touch down to reception rate. That's solid. Like if you could do at least 3 to 1 and like not 3 to 1 by rounding it off 3 to 1, like at least be above 3.0, mm-hmm. which is slightly right now, um, That that's good. And it's not including his, uh, his rushing, right? It's more in D4, I think, where he's... Uh, he's running like a... Like, like Mania, yeah. Wow. So what division do you want to go to next? Let's go to four. So as I hope everyone's aware, they forgot the two conferences going. Yep. Um, seven teams from each conference are going to make the playoffs. Okay. It's going to be like the NFL playoffs, basically. One seed gets a bye. Two, to, two versus seven. Three versus uh, six. And four versus five. Mm-hmm. Um, and then the, re, the reseeding after... Yeah, yeah. Like the... yeah it's, it's not a bracket. Right, right. So we'll start in the Babylon Conference. We could see that... Uh, has Phoenix locked up the one seed in the bye? Let me take a quick look here. Yeah, so Phoenix has locked up the one seed in the bye. I like divisions like this where the one that one seed is huge. Yeah, right? yeah. It's not just say, oh, look, we finished with the one seed. Well, when you finish number one in the 11-team division, I think, 11-team uh, conference, in a 22-team division, we felt you deserved a little bit of a... Recompense. Yeah, fair. A little, a little treat. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so congrats to Phoenix on that. Uh, yeah, so there's currently... So they've officially locked it up? Or did they beat Sour Peeps at the head? They did not beat Sour Peeps at the head, but Sour Peeps have a forfeit. So even if they're tied, oh, they lost Sour Peeps, you. but that forfeit would be the first tiebreaker. Good, and they beat call. CIA. So oh, okay. if CIA ties with them, they uh, they would not get it. They would not get that one seed. Um, so you got Saint Genis, CIA, Syracuse, Phoenix all clinched. Les Bouchers, Bandits, Les Vilains, and Les Improbables all fighting for their one, two, three, four teams fighting for the final three playoff spots. And the schedule makers sometimes really do a good job. We got Les Improbables playing the Bandits Oof. in this final week. Both four and five teams. Man. Looking to make it in. Uh, I believe there is a slight chance that if Les Improbables win, Bandits can also make it in. That's four and six. Okay. Well, whoever wins... Whoever wins clinches. Right. Okay. This, is, this is clearly winning you're in. Wow. But it might not be losing you're out. Okay. I mean, yeah. Because uh, if Improbables lose, they're out. Officially, yeah. yes, because l- villains are also playing Les Bouchers. Okay. Okay. So uh, I looked at it before the show. If uh, let's just say villains beat Boucher, villains would be in. Boucher would be four and five. They're also playing Saint Genie. Let's say Boucher would lose that game. Uh, I believe Les Boucher have the tiebreaker over Improbable. Damn. Uh, Oh, my apologies. I actually beat Les Bouchers. But one second. There was a reason. If Les Bouchers and Les Bouchers both finish 4 and 6. Yeah, Bum might oh, actually be exciting. in. Yeah, yeah. So, so 
all teams are alive and well. Wow. And even with a loss, you can still make it in. But it's it's always nicer to win, win and be in the playoffs. Yeah, yeah, true, true. So uh, don't don't play for the loss. It's not the best strategy to make it in. And I then know. looking at the power conference, uh, let me just quickly look. If Drama Club has clinched the one seed, they lost to Mosico Nightmare. So Drama Club have wins over Tropic Thunder, Hawks, and Action Squad. So they have officially clinched the one seed. Nice. And we got so we got a double header for Warriors. Yeah. Facing off against Mimosa Crew and Mustard Tigers. If you go back to the standings, look where Mustard Tigers are and you look where Mimosa Crew are. Oh boy. So talk about a great scheduling. Uh lot left is wow. still left to play. In this uh, conference as well. So Mimosa Crew. So technically Mimosa Crew could fall out. I guess it would be maybe uh, not because points against Tigers are like at a thousand. Yeah. So Tigers are playing Warriors? Mimosa Crew also beat the Tigers this year. Okay. So, okay. If, t- if Tigers win, they're in. Well, it's simple, right? Tigers win, they're in. If Tigers win, they're in, yes. Yeah. It's that simple. Are they going to win, though? I don't think so. No? No. You see Mustard Tigers missing out on the... I think the Warriors are going to win that game. But they're going to lose to a Monster Crew. So by that, I think the Tigers sneak in. Well, if they're only tied... If it's only Tigers and Monster Tigers tied at 4-6, and six, then the winner of that game would have the head-to-head tiebreaker. Oh, but then there's Legendaries. Oh boy. But legendaries lost to Tigers and to Mosa Crew. Okay. So I'm pretty sure they're eliminated right now. Okay. Damn. Yeah. Exciting, exciting. I like it. Um I had a few shout outs to make in this division. Uh We had a rusher pick six. We actually had two rusher pick sixes, I think, in this uh, Come on. division. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So let me just... Oh, we, we had a rusher pick six in Div, uh, Div 1 as well. Really? I think so. Let me check right now. So, um, Louis-Philippe Desjardins, the rusher for Les Improbables, getting two sacks and a pick six in this game. Uh, shout out to him. Come on, Terry. My dream. Maybe one day. You never had one? No. You had a pick? I've gotten a pick once in my life, but I didn't return it for six. And it was on, uh, it wasn't the MFL, it was on seven on seven high school football full field. It counts. Look at this, yeah. Uh, our boy from. Uh, oh, yes, Chris yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember hearing that one. Uh, so good on him. Les Improbables, who are a team of uh, not flag football players for the most part. Uh, winning big in this one, 47 to zero. Uh, good on them. Uh, I know Milan is still learning the ropes at the quarterback, so if you had any tips for him, I'm sure uh, he'd appreciate it. I heard that uh, he was he threw a few passes deep in the middle down the field, and that's a, like a big no-no. Mm-hmm. Uh, what, what I would tell him is that use your snapper, especially if it's your father. Oh yeah, that's the good connection. And he, he has very secure hands, and throwing to your snapper is like very high probability c- completion, like he, for like any quarterback starting out, right? Like yeah. The, the player that's literally the closest to you. Uh, I'd say efficient flag football is, tends to be boring flag football, but don't be scared to do boring because that's how you get better. You'll gain confidence. And then you can do more exciting and fun things. Hey, boring wins your games. Yeah. Wins your games. Or just get your completions in this case. Yeah. Yes. Well said. Uh, but I did hear he does throw a very nice spiral. Sometimes nice. to the other team, but a very nice spiral nonetheless. Honestly, as long as it comes out pretty. <laughs> that's all you care about, right? Come on. Anything else you want to add to help the young book out? I think, look, we have like the, you said the good stuff there. Keep that short game going. Um, and it's kind of what I always say. And then eventually teams bite up and then you hit them with the double moves, the hook and goes. Uh, keep your playbook, you know, not five, six plays, rotate, variation. 
Um, we always you know we talk about all Matt. Hooks. Yeah, all hooks. We talk about Matt and his like twenty six plays. Somebody's just got to keep it a little. I think he's up to thirty six now. There you go. Keep it simple. I, you know, have triple slants one way, triple slants the other way. That's that's two plays right there. Um, and um, yeah, don't complicate things, especially early on. Yeah, and also like important to note that he's still a kid playing in an adult league that, I mean, with it's... some very old adults in in the league. <laughs> Uh, so like props him for being a part of it and then mm-hmm. on top of that being the quarterback yeah <laughs> like just being a quarterback in any team even if it's your age group takes a lot of guts and, the most important position and you know what right yeah and it's the most important and the most difficult position so just the fact that he's accepted that role like he has all my respect and same you're gonna go through difficult times even the, the best quarterbacks like sucked and had horrible games when they first started throwing mm-hmm. like everyone no, no one started throwing and was amazing early on so these growing pains are just gonna help you get better, like. You, it's part of the process. Yeah, just part of the process. Keep your head up and keep doing your thing. Like, don't get discouraged, and mm-hmm. you'll see in a few years you're gonna be balling out and be like, "Yeah, remember that." <laughs> <laughs> uh, also in this game, uh, shout out to Chrissy. Uh, two sacks. Mathieu is one of the Damn. better running quarterbacks in all of Division Four. Yeah. Uh, remember we spoke about it last week, uh, leading the in rushing yards or close to. Uh, she held him to four yards a pop and got two sacks on him. Damn. So. Because he, uh, he won that matchup. Yep. I mean, not the game, but... No, but... The matchup. Yeah, the matchup. <laughs> uh, did I see any other Division Four games? No. Well, I refed. I refed uh, CIA Fusion, Les Bouchers. Oh, yeah. Heck of a game. Um, what happened in that game? Man, I'm impressed with, uh, with our Bears fan at, at quarterback, Jason. He had a really nice pass in this game. He Caleb? Did... Sorry? Caleb? Caleb Williams, baby. Uh, he looked like Williams as well. He looked a little better than Williams, you know. But he rolled one play. He rolled to his right, and you know a lot of quarterbacks like to tuck and run. But he kept his eyes downfield. He pointed up and did a little. He pointed. Yeah, point like that. A little dump, dump pass to Slipski. I don't know. I suppose he's playing into four. Why did he point? Like to the receiver. Like keep going. Oh, okay. okay yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and uh, he just he threw an absolute dime dart over. A dime or a dart? Both. No, but like you have to specify because they're not the same thing. It was a mart. <laughs> it was both. It was, of them what? Together. It was mart. Both of them mixed. But a dime and a dart both are the letter D. So why are you making a weird sound at the beginning of your... Well, like it's a D... A... It's a dirt. Okay, it's a, okay, it's a dam. It's Dim- a dam. Like a dime and a dart. It's a dam. He threw a dam. A damn like, good dam. Yeah, okay. Um, right, to Zaplitsky. I feel like a dart has more oomph than a dime. But, but it's both, bro. You, you, like, it was so nice it had to be both. Um, and um, that was a really good play in the game that stood out. But both QBs I was impressed with. Luca, Lucas as well. Um... Like both of them are just straight quarterbacks. Get the ball, boom, yeah, boom. Yeah, the read, they're both throw. literally your typical quarterback. Exactly, like almost robotic, and uh, they go through the reads and they kind make like plays. I uh, appreciate that. Thank you, thank you. They well, they have heck, they're better weekend <laughs> than I did at quarterback. But um, no, they're putting up points. And um, Kayla wanted me to mention that she got touchdown, even though she clearly didn't get touchdown. She got tackled short. But she's not a touchdown in the stats. No, she didn't, which was correct. But she thinks she got a touchdown. Did they end up scoring on that drive? Yeah, I think so. Because our boy Dave St. John was a little slow to get to the line at ref. You just you're throwing a re- another ref under the no no no, the no. Bus? I whispered I whispered no one heard okay. and then after From your that angle, did she look in no okay no it was, yeah no she wasn't in she's too slow <laughs> she was I mean she was too slow on that play and then I she the still one. like cheers you on and likes you more no no I just meant that like she, she made a great play she had a heck of a game I'll leave it at that Kayla literally runs better wheel routes than you uh, that's that's fair <laughs> I don't I don't the best. <laughs> I saw one of the one of your routes from the uh, Pat Jones footage, and man, it's, it's, that ain't a wheel. Okay, it, it ain't an out and up. Hey, if it it's gets like there, a, it gets it's a freaking there. like. Okay, look, like this is like this, and then you go like there, and then you go there, right? Yeah, no one has time. You do that. this. <laughs> <laughs> You're literally a fade. That's your wheel. It's right. I actually never really noticed that. And then I wonder why I throw so many picks on that wheel. wheel. <laughs> that wheel. Come on, Terry. No, but I'll just say Kayla ball in the game. She normally does. And, but uh, two catches. Oh yeah, okay. The stats weren't good. Never mind. Yeah, the stats were. Yeah, we had us. Yeah. Um, but CIA Fusion really impressed. This is the team that I was hating on, right? Well, I mean, not the actual team, like not Cyclones. But it's Cyclones, Iron Wolves, and uh, Airborne. So it's you, the you Iron really, Wolves, you really, Airborne. You hate on two of those three teams, like. I'll call them IA Fusion. What? IA Fusion just cut out the C. Yeah. Okay. Libu shit too. They're gonna be. They're like. I hope this is a playoff matchup because that'd be a good one. Yeah, it could be. Oh, also, um, shoot, number 10 on Boucher. I know because the stats weren't, I believe it was... Uh, Zavier? Yeah, absolute baller. 
Really? The stats don't show because it was only in the second half, but I think he had like at least two, if not three touchdowns, toe tap catches. Your boy BB Minard also balled out, eh? Yeah, he did. He had two stop and go touchdowns. This is a fun game. Two stop and go touchdowns. Okay, yeah, never mind. I'm say the yard, the but... stats, yeah, yeah. <laughs> cool. Any other D4 games that you saw? Mm, nope. This one caught my attention. 25 to nothing win by Tropic Thunder over Mimosa Crew. It looks like a, a forfeit win because usually when you win by forfeit, you win 25 to nothing. And uh, Mimosa Crew literally scored 42 points earlier that day against Mustard Tigers, who you could argue Mustard Tigers and Tropic Thunder, you, who's the better team, really? Like, obviously, Tropic Thunder are having the better season right now. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think maybe Mimosa Crew told themselves we'll score all our points in one game. <laughs> And we'll do half half, like take half of it for the first game, half for the <laughs> second game, or something like that. Because like, look, in, in that first game, Curran almost had a perfect game: three touchdowns, no interceptions. Um, they did have a Chad did have a pick six. Then that second second game, like literally no offense whatsoever. I wonder if it's like the heat. It could be. It wasn't for the double, uh, double dippers though. True. But I uh, guess we gotta get credit to to Tropic Thunder. Yeah, Tropic Thunder have one right now. Uh, I think. One, two, three, four, five games in a row. Wow. Talk about red hot teams going to the playoffs. For real. This team could uh, really make some noise, right? Game against Legendary is coming up. They should be able to win uh, win that one as well. Yeah. They, they, yeah. They're no longer an underdog, I think. So we should not view them that way. Rob really balling out with quarterback this uh, this week. Uh, is, he, is he full-time? Connor is a full, the right. regular quarterback. Maybe he, I don't They know. kind of switch, I think, sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Uh, what division are we going to next? Let's go to Div 2. Okay, so in Div 2, very exciting. Yeah. Uh, we got Respect coming up. Well, both games are at 9 in the morning. Bright and so early. Like, this is... This is um, it's like a pre-playoff match. Official. Official. Like, I mean, the, the, this is... Yeah. Is, okay. So you got Respect playing against Carol B. Yeah. The winner gets a ticket to the August 3rd championship finals of division two the loser still has a bye week and goes to play in the semifinals well by by bye week i mean no division two games are on the first week of the regular other playoffs like they're not playing on july the playoffs start july um 20th yeah but division two only has a semifinal matchup on the 27th and a finals on august 3rd okay so everyone who makes the playoffs in division two still gets a, a week off to rest the the winner of respect and KLB will get two weeks off to rest mm. and go directly to the finals the loser plays in the semifinals. So, Respect and KLB have clinched the playoff spot. They're battling out to see who's going to the finals, who's going to the semifinals. Mm-hmm. Pocket Rockets and Secure Top Shooters, who literally just played against each other this past Saturday, we'll get to that soon, mm-hmm. uh, are playing against each other for a playoff berth. Mm-hmm. The loser will be eliminated. eliminated. The winner will face off against the loser of KLB and Respect in that lone semifinal matchup. Got that, folks? Okay, so it's kind of the NBA play-in. Uh, like well, seven, like right now. Sorry, right now, respect and KOB are like seven, eight, and secure top shooters and pop rights are like nine, ten. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Um. Okay, so pocket rockets play against secure top shooters. Secure top shooters didn't know if they'd have enough players to play the game. They're only going to be four, maybe five. Uh, with this roster of twenty-seven players, like uh, about twenty-six of them couldn't play or what, whatnot, and. Uh, a lot of people, only, a lot of them, only found out towards the end, um, and then uh, Secure Top Shooters decided to go with five players and a sub QB and Brady, who was not allowed to, not allowed to play defense. He was only allowed to sub only at the quarterback position because his quarterback rating allowed him to throw, but his defense rating was too high to play defense. So they played six on six when they were on O, but five on six when they were on D. Come on, Terry. Secure Top Shooters played this whole game with five defenders. Uh, midway through the game, the score was tied at one point. Yeah, so early in the second half, uh, Secure Top Shooters were down eight going to halftime. Okay. 20 to 12. Uh, they got ball. They scored. They hit their two point. Make it 20 up. At that point, uh, I forgot who someone showed up at the field. And Mike was about to include him. And he's like, okay, we'll just forfeit the game. We'll play six on six. And everyone looked at him. Like, literally everyone looked at him. He's like, bruh, it's a tie game right now. Let's try to win it with because the game didn't mean anything in the standings. Right, I was gonna they say they were gonna face off anyway. Yeah, yeah. But all the guys want to know like, yo, can we, can we pull this off with five dudes on defense? Yeah. Like I know Brady was playing in six defenders, but you can assume when you only have five defenders that 
you need to score every play because like every every, uh, every drive, drive. Yeah, yeah. Because your defense is gonna probably let alone a, give up a touchdown, right? right every right, drive, right. and it's gonna come down to converts, which Brady's very confident in. Yeah. But but Marvin told Brady, "Don't worry about it. I got you." <laughs> Getting two picks, including one pick six that you ran the length of the field from the back of the end zone <laughs> all the way to the other end Holy. for a full sixty yard return. And um, you saw it. I ref that game. Um, yeah, so it was back and forth up until that pick six, which gave uh, Secure Top Shooters a two score lead, and then they just didn't look back. Um, Damn, that's impressive. It's it's really impressive. Look, like I think at the beginning of the game, Peel was playing very very safe, mm. but then it kind of just got boring. Mm-hmm. So he decided to take some shots, and Marvin said, "I want that shot," you know. Yeah, yeah, but. Uh, like, Marvin in this game was really elite. Like, really, really elite. Seven for a buck 11, three touchdowns, two picks, uh, pick six. Pick six. Uh, yeah. yeah. Alexi Fan also balled out in this game. It was like a battle of top dogs. Yeah. Uh, ten catches for 110 yards, one touchdown. Yeah, Devin, the red zone threat. Yeah. Devin, the only four catches, but three of them for touchdowns. Efficient. So, if, if 75% of your, your grabs yeah. are, are in the other te- in your uh, in the end zone, it's pretty good. You'll take it. I wonder how this changes or doesn't how they play each other next. Because if your top shooters are... Well, you got to assume Mike War Mike will be throwing. I believe he is out for the season. Oh, is he really? Yeah, it's a pretty bad injury they have. I'm not oh, sure shoot. exactly, but... Uh, okay. Like, he, yeah. So is Brady able to come playoff time? Brady's not technically allowed to sub for them come playoff time. Yeah. But they may ask for an exception. Okay. And it'll be up to the committee to decide at that point, given the circumstances. Oh, wow. Okay, okay. But... Uh, like legally, he would not be allowed like uh, on his own. Okay. So okay. So because I'll remind everyone that like in in the regular season, the sub cap for Division Two is uh, eighty. Mm. But just like in every other division, uh, during the regular season, we allow quarterbacks to because the, if the quarterback cap is higher, mm. we allow you to go up to ten points higher than the sub cap or the quarterback uh, cap, whatever is lower. So in this okay. case, Division Two doesn't have a quarterback cap. It's basically a hundred. Right. The sub cap is eighty, so the quarterback sub cap is ninety. Brady's within that eighty and ninety. Mm. So he can't legally sub because he's over eighty, but he right. still sub in the regular season. Mm. Okay. Yeah. You gotta assume they're gonna ask for it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and uh, well, it hasn't been discussed yet, but the like the rationale behind the the, the rule with the sub cap in the playoffs and why we don't give that extra ten benefit is because. We want teams who have their full rosters or at least enough players to play to have a priority in that sense. Like, yes, it's unfortunate that you got an injury or that uh, your quarterback is not able to play. Or in this case, it is an injury, but could have been on vacation during that time or whatever. Mm-hmm. But you, you have to be at a disadvantage if you're missing like your star quarterback. Like, yes, Mike Roy's a Division One quarterback. Brady's a Division One quarterback. Mm-hmm. Uh, obviously, Mike has chemistry with this team, but Brady also has chemistry with a lot of these players and Marvin, Jason, yeah. uh, Jeremy. So, like, does having Brady weaken them, make them the same, or make them stronger? Like, it's it's actually it's a legitimate question that like people have different opinions on, right? right, and, it, right. and it's something against Mike versus versus Brady. Like, no. they're both clearly Division One quarterbacks. Yeah. But let's remind everyone that Brady was the Division One MVP last fall. Yeah. True. I think he was Division One MVP and best quarterback as well of division all of division one mm-hmm. so it's like this division one all-star yeah. mvp can just go sub for a team in division two like it's yeah you gotta balance all, all, be tricky. all that out right because like you do want the team who's getting this sub to be at a disadvantage and we feel that the 80 cap gives you a good enough player mm-hmm. but you will be at a disadvantage right. which is which is kind of the, the case because right. if this team's coming up with a full healthy roster they, they should have that slight advantage in the in, in that department on paper before playing the game obviously anything could happen yeah you saw it in this game they won with five players yeah. on defense right so makes sense yeah yeah I'm just exciting stuff in D2 yeah way to, good stuff but way to make it an interesting division with only four teams what did I do what was it like you guys decided to play in play out oh yeah, 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 yeah. that's pretty cool thank you yeah I got you uh, women's? Let's go with women's. So a lot of exciting happened. This was the action that happened. This was the battle of the top three teams playing uh, du- all double headers yep. this uh, Saturday. And uh, well, we know all five teams are, are, are making the playoffs. Mm-hmm. We know that Crazy Bees are going to play against Mockingjays in round one. Yep. And now we do not know who's getting that... Uh, who's, getting the, who's getting the one seed, right? It ain't clinched yet. John McClunes came into this week 7-0. and 
undefeated, your unanimous number one team, and now they're sitting at seven and two. Two uh, straight losses. Two straight losses. That's big. But also two convincingly bad, bad losses, <laughs> giving up a, a total of forty-five points against Tigres and Des Drapeau. Who uh, Des Drapeau? I appreciate you putting up the logo. Very nice logo. Um, and only scoring ten points through those two games. Look, I heard that uh, Roxanne had a festive weekend going on and she had a lot of driving to do Saturday morning to get to the game. Okay. So I could understand the, the being tired and the exhaustion and all that kicking in, especially the whole mental aspect of like being the quarterback and everything that comes with it, right? The, the stress and all that. But to score Not zero easy. points in that first game, like uh, luckily... Uh, the last score of the game was to to beat a Thomas getting a pick one to break the okay it looks the, better the, than... the donut yeah hey, does it look better really I think twenty five nothing maybe looks better than twenty five to one. one it's a very awkward score what do you yeah maybe maybe not it's the best it's the best we ask uh, but look we both saw the Desapo Tigres game last week and we saw the how strong those two teams were we we did speak about it Jama Kings were the undefeated team coming this weekend yeah. Do you still think they stand a chance against both these teams given the way they lost these two games? For sure. Like, I'm still going to stick with Tigres at number one in my power rankings. If I, if I was a betting man, which I'm not, I'd pick them McQueen. to win it all. Uh, but, yes, if you drama queens end up being your champions, I would be surprised. Like, it's, the, it's one, like you said, it's one bad day, even though it's two games. Um, and uh, the seven previous games, they won on no fluke. So, definitely, maybe a bit of an underdog right now, but maybe that's what they needed. You kind of need that before the playoffs. Sometimes a bit of a wake-up call. So I'm not too worried. I agree with you. I wouldn't be surprised if Jamal Coons are your uh, inaugural spring 2024 women's division champions. But if they don't secure that one seed and they have to beat both Tigres and Des Drapeau to be that champion, will that then surprise you? Because I got to admit, if, if they got to go through both those teams, that'll be one hell of a championship. You could argue it's maybe the toughest championship to win in this women's division, given that there's three amazing teams. And um, yeah, I, I gotta say, it, I would be a, a tad bit surprised. Agreed. Yeah, I think they need the one seed. And we'll talk about that. But before that, let's just recap the uh, rematch of Tigres against Diaz Drapeau. We saw that crazy finish last week, how Diaz Drapeau uh, won that game. Yes. Uh, this one was a little less, cl- it wasn't as close. Uh, Paula Rivera is protecting the ball super well, going 250 yards, five touchdowns, zero interceptions, completing 24 passes. Uh, she had Karen with. <clears throat> 94 yards, Sari with two touchdowns. Then you had three other ladies uh, with a, a touchdown apiece, uh, Sabrina, Narelle, and Edna. Uh, you can see Vivian Claude with only 50% completion in this one, still protecting the ball well as well, but not getting that uh, the firepower touchdown that she likes. Right. Look, it was a long, hot day. Uh, they had a little bit of a longer break uh, in between their games this past, um, uh, this past weekend, right? Uh, yeah, they were there mm-hmm. for... Uh, Quite a few more hours, so who knows if they were in the shade or ch- chugging some Coronas on the sideline yeah, yeah. or, or whatnot. Uh, but a very clean game by both quarterbacks. This is the, like look, they they've won a few times against one. They've lost a few times against one. Like mm-hmm. uh, I really really like Drama Queens. I, I I wish them all the best. But this is my finals preview. This level and yeah, and, and I hope. I, I'm somewhat saying it's like it could light that little fire, uh, yeah. you know, underneath you. You know what? So you yeah. could like push through and get the next step. But look, regardless of what happens going forward, in your inaugural women's division, to have Drama Queens, Des Drapo, and Tigres all finish with seven wins, at least. Uh, yeah. Because one of these teams are going to have eight. Yeah. I think they could all come into next season with their heads up, thinking they're the favorite. Mm-hmm. And it's a success for all of them. No matter who's the champion in this game in, in this season, I, I think all three teams showed us that like women in this league could ball out and ball the heck out. 100%. <laughs> and props to all those girls uh, on those teams. And even Crazy Bees and Walking Jays. I was it, just going to say, like, Crazy Bees... It wasn't the prettiest season, but they did show some glimpses of uh, a good ball also. But they could, they could still shock some people. You really think so? Yeah. I'd be, I'd be very surprised. Like, how many McDonald's would you bet if I told you that? Uh, 10. 10 to 1. 10 to 1? Yeah. For each team or for both? What? Like for crazy oh, beast, ten to one and mocking. Long Jays probably twenty. Okay, so combined, like if I say crazy bees and mocking Jays are the field, 
Crazy Bees and Mocking Jays or the field. Like, if Crazy Bees or Mocking would... Jays win, you win the bet. If they don't, I win the bet. Okay, so then I would give you one. Yeah, how many would I give McDonald's? you if one of the two win? If one of the two win, I'd say um, 21. You want to shake on that? What? <laughs> you get 21. Yeah. Okay, wait a minute. Okay. So, so if, if Mocking Jays or Crazy Bees win, yeah. I said 25. 25 to 2? No, I said 25. No, to 1. I said 21 to 1. Yeah, you said 21. Okay, so... Can we get 25 to 2? No, I like 21 to 1. Because you don't want to owe me 2, right? No, I like 21 <laughs> to 1. Okay, deal. Make it happen. <laughs> That'd be crazy. You're going to be coaching them up on the sideline. Yeah, let's go. Um, now this... Look, look how crazy it is. We have Crazy Bees playing against Mocking Jays. Uh, last regular season uh, game. Hopefully Mocking Jays get that first victory. Crazy Bees, their, lone, their two victories are against Mocking Jays. Mm -hmm. And we have Diaz Zrapo playing against Drama Queens for that number one seed. Huge. So, the winner of this team will avoid Tigres in the semifinals. You gotta hear the fuck up. That's crazy. The loser of this team will have to play against Tigres in that semifinal. So, this game means a lot. Wow. Like, you, you could argue this is like almost a buy in the finals, right? For real. It's, it's cool when you get like these playoff matchups. Ahead of the playoffs. Yeah. Uh, Tigres ended the season with 99 points against through 10 games. Like, less than 10 points against a game. That, that's crazy. They have Pro 96. Yeah. And uh, Drama Queens are probably going to give up less than 100 as well. Oh, my gosh. Drama Queens are at 63. Defense with championships. So, what division didn't we do yet? Uno. And Cinco, no? And Cinco. We didn't do five either? Did, we didn't do did five, did we? We did... Three, four, Wait. two women's. Yeah, we didn't do five. Okay, we'll go through one first, then we'll go to five last. So, Good call. surprisingly, or not, yeah, uh, you got uh, Arnold's. I think they're still alive. I couldn't believe that. Yeah, yeah I told you, and you, you were convinced I was lying to you. I think, uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> think what? I guess because I was sure 18 was going to at least win one game, or I was. I guess I feel we didn't deserve to make the playoffs if we go 46. <laughs> so, but yeah. Uh, so, he's, so, how would we make the playoffs? If, oh, well, look, look. Sorry. Before that, to everyone saying that there should have been four teams in. Yeah, there should have been four. No, no, no. I got the good argument. You just said something that uh, made me think of something. So, a 4 and 6 team could make the playoffs in this division, right? Right? Yeah. In mostly every other division, there ain't no four and six team making it in. In Division Three, where we're playing, there are two four and six teams not making it in. Right? Hoping we win. Sorry. Hoping we win our last game and finish four and six. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So that just proves that, like, even with three teams, you have a four and six team making it in. Yeah. You're already bringing in a team below five hundred making it in the playoffs. Like, how, how many of those uh, participation ribbons yeah, do you yeah. want to give out? You know. That's true. Anyway, um, what was I gonna say? Yeah, so Outlaws are facing A-team. A-team are winning your in. Lose and stick around to see if Master Chiefs are going to do you a solid or not. And if, if A-team lose that game, let's say A-team lose against Outlaws. Yeah. And then Master Chiefs know all they got to do, like, obviously they want to win, right? Mm -hmm. But you know that Master Chiefs A-team rivalry. Oh, my God. If Master Chiefs know by losing to Iron Wolves, A-team would be out of the playoffs. Is that more of a victory for them than actually winning the game? Like, I never didn't even think about that. Like, what do you think? They decided not to play. Like, what, what, do you think they'd actually consider it? No. I, I, no, hope, I, I, don't, I, I don't think so either, but, like, yeah. like imagine it, it's a good, like, moral victory or silver lining. Like, oh, let's say we lose. Oh, well, we lost, but it, it, thanks to our loss, A team didn't make the playoffs. Yeah, yeah. How, so the, how happy do you think they'll be? The only thing I could think of, think of is maybe a, a player who is going to miss the game because they had something, and if it was a, they had a chance, they would have skipped it. You know what I mean? But. I know, I hope That'd we, be really interesting. Yeah, and I like, really hope that doesn't happen. 18 loses to Outlaws, and then their playoff hopes come into the hands of Master Chiefs, and they will need to cheer on Master That's Chiefs. That's crazy. They'll need to be there on the sidelines. Go, Master Chiefs, go! Well, look, Beat the Iron Wolves, and we'll make it. A-Team has... A -team, if A-Team wins, they don't, they don't have to worry no, about I, any yeah, of that, yeah, yeah. right? Obviously, so. obviously, but the way that A-Team played this past weekend, scoring only six points against Outlaws, and then uh, but are Outlaws against Bush Boys. Fighting for the one seed? Yes. Wow, okay, so it's a huge game for Outlaws, too. If Outlaws win and give up... Fewer than 49 points, they clinched the one seed. So chances are they get fewer than 49. Wow, this is crazy. Okay, so it's a massive game for both teams. Yeah. So the way 
So Iron it means Wolves, something for both teams. Right. The way, exactly. The way Iron, Iron Wolves leapfrog A team would be if A team loses, we Iron Wolves win, but we have to give up. Oh, yeah, because you have the points against battle, right? Because then we'd be You're even. currently winning the points against battle by 15 points. So you'd have to give up. You could give up up to 15 more points than. But what if it's exactly 15? Then I think it goes to the. For one and one against each other. I think it goes to differential then. Okay. Okay. Check the rule book. It's in the rule book. So okay, okay, don't, gotcha, don't quote gotcha. me on this. You guys will wow. the rule book. Um, because technically, if a team loses and we win but give up 80, let's say we win 90 to 80, <laughs> we'd be out. Yeah. Okay. So we got to kind of win a low scoring game. Depending on how much you, you're, you're lucky that you're in the position to know after. So you'll know exactly the, the the golden number. That's crazy. You should also look up at the tiebreakers if it's the exact same amount of points. It might come down to con- convert at the end, right? You don't want to go for one or two yeah, or, yeah. Or, or whatever. True, true, true. But um, what's crazy is if Arnold's were playing Masters before the Outlaws 18 wow, game, this is crazy. you guys would have had to gamble and try to win, but also give up the less amount of points, right? And it's at the same field, right? Yeah, back-to-back, same same part, wow. same field number. That's nuts. Um, and then... Come on, I can't believe I'm training for the Outlaws. Come on, Outlaws. <laughs> I, I thought coming into this one, Outlaws would have a, an easy one because a team would be clinched and they would not be able to get that one seed. So Outlaws would be battling for the one seed against a team that had a meaningless game. But now it's actually fun that this game matters. And you know what? I, I actually do think a team will win. What, what makes you think that? It's something about... I, I thought of it when I saw how like badly they sucked the last weekend. I'm like, and that's exactly they, why I think they won this They weekend. don't suck like that. They, they played like literally their worst weekend of football. They, they don't suck like that two weekends in a row. It's it's a team that's in a good position with Outlaws, and it's a team that has their backs against the wall on a team, right? They're in a good position with Outlaws. Well, if they, even if they lose, they're in the playoff spot. Like oh, Outlaws. Yeah, but outlaws are in a good position regardless of if they win or but lose. They want, that win they, want, they want the win. But a team like needs needs the win. You know what I'm saying? Not when you as want much as Iron Wolves. You, not, if you're saying who needs the win the most this weekend, it's Iron Wolves. Uh, Massachusetts would be cool if they pulled off a. Uh, <laughs> no, but yeah, it is Iron Wolves for sure. Yeah. But uh, uh, yeah, if, if. I just want to see like, like Dylan jumping in the air of joy, knowing that his team clinched the playoff spot because Master Chiefs beat Arnold's. Oh my gosh, that's, that's the image I want to see. That's crazy. <laughs> I can't believe that. Fun stuff. Uh, last but not least, We've got two minutes. Division five, <laughs> but you're, you're in the nine, no? Yeah. So you're you could even leave here like in fifteen. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Well, well, here you go. Because. Uh, when you look at the standings, Division 5, we're talking about the schedule makers. Yeah. I think this is the best one yet. Uh, eight ballers are at the 8th seed at 3 and 6. Secret agents are at the 9th seed, 3 and 6. Same record. They're playing against each other this final weekend. Holy cow. 10.30 uh, a.m., there's your game of the week in Division 5. However, if Titans lose against Big Booties... Oh, sorry, no. So, Titans are clinched at this point because... Between eight ballers and secret agents, one of them is going to finish with three three wins, right? Right. So everyone else is clinched above eight ballers, and the final season is going to come down to that 10.30 a.m. game between eight ballers and secret agents. Who do you got? I feel secret agents are better than the record. I was going to so, say, I like my secret agents. Yeah, but like, eight ballers have been up and down, more often down than up, but when they've been up, they, they pulled, some, pulled like some impressive wins, right? I'm going to go... A tight one, a fun one. Secret agents twenty five, twenty four. Over eight ballers in overtime. No nope, regulation. I, I think this game goes to overtime. Really? Yeah. I think no. I think secret agents score with uh, they score last play of the game. Game is extended and they get their extra point. Repeat that. Twenty four to eighteen. Mm-hmm. Last play of the game. They have the ball at the seven. Score seven year touchdown. Game gets extended. To get the extra point. Uh, they're down seven. No, down 24-18. Down six. Oh, down three. Yeah, yeah. So they don't have for one. Uh, I refed Slot Machine and Sunni's 45. And we we're talking about Slot Machine in the field. And looking at their stats, we were saying that Slot Machine are a mammoth of a team. And I got to say, I can understand why, but I was not impressed this game. Because you had the Sunni's players saying, oh, they seem too strong for Division 5. They seem too strong for Division 5. And I was telling them, like, throughout the whole game, it was tied. It was 6-0, 6-6, 12-6, 14-6, 14-12. Uh, Sunnis were down two points with the ball, I think twice in that second half. Wow. And they just couldn't get that first down to keep the drive alive. Um, and then finally, uh, Slot Machine could have killed the clock, went for the dagger. 
that final touchdown pass, the 34 yard to William. Um, look, Giovanni Antonacci could sling it. Like, he has. A, oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah he, oh, you seen him play? Mm -hmm. Yeah, he could, sl like, literally sling it. And he's a great runner as well. So I could see why this team's dangerous. Uh, they, they got a bunch of talent on this team. Uh, for Sunnis, I think they found their quarterback with Jose Luis. Uh, it was not his best, most efficient game. Sami should have a great defense as well. Mm -hmm. um, shout out to their rushers. I, it, was a, it was a rusher by committee between Carmina and I forgot who it was. I think it was Carmina and William. I, they both had like, I think, five sacks. That, not five sacks. Five not sacks that were like a split second to being a sack. Like, oh, like really, really close, call, call, close calls. Um, but also, uh, this was like the, kind of like the Diego show. Like, Diego put on his salsa uh, <laughs> shoes in this one <laughs> and was dancing around all kinds. Um, yeah, so... Speed, speed kills. Yeah, speed does kill. So slot machine do have the one seed locked up in this division. There is no buy. Uh, they'll be facing off either eight ballers, Titans, or secret agents in that first round. Um, are Titans officially in? Yeah, Titans are officially in because... Luckily. One of the, these teams are playing against each other, so one of them is going to lose. True. True, true. Yeah, but Titans, they, you want to go in off a W, though. Uh, you really need that W because you started the season 4-1 and one, and you just had four straight losses to uh, to close out the season, right? Yes, they played great teams, but uh, they had a few winnable games uh, on that schedule as well, right? Yeah, that's the thing. Um, yeah. And a cool, a one game that uh, caught my eye, two evenly matched teams, good teams, big booties, nothing but D, 20-14 to 14 game. You saw this game? or No, I didn't. Just uh, looking at the... Um, the uh, the scores and everything. Max usual thing. Nine catches, eighty eight yards. Still, um, not good enough to win the game though. It was Getting... Tristan's four picks to Alex two that. Yeah, Max nine catches. The rest of the squad seven. Oof. Yeah, Tristan was a uh, subbing a quarterback for this team. Um, hard to get a some like a groove going when like their quarterback. I think he missed quite a few games, right? Uh, I wouldn't be surprised if he only played five or six games at, at this point. Yeah, he really he only has five games. Hopefully, he plays this upcoming weekend and get that one game in before the playoffs. They have a game against Titans, very winnable, especially in the state where the Titans are right now. Mm -hmm. Um. So yeah, like look, this this big booties team has been more of a middle of a pack team this season. Yeah, but. I would not be surprised if they're making some noise in the playoffs, right? No. Um, they definitely have the experience led by Max. And um, look, Leanne led the team in tackles this game with four tackles despite the loss. Uh, Charles got a sack. You had picks by Max, obviously, but also Tristan got a, got a pick in this one. Um, if this team, whoever's their quarterback in the playoffs, could just protect the ball and not throw more interceptions than, than touchdowns. Yeah. They definitely have the weapons and the defense to to succeed, right? Like, mm -hmm. like I feel like just looking at the stats, I didn't see this game, but nothing but these quarterback only threw for a, eighty-one yards. They're more of a defensive team given their name uh, and the number of picks they got. But if you're playing a team that only throws for eighty-one yards, if you don't throw four interceptions, you should win this game. Right. True. And you have uh, Jeffrey there getting three picks in the pick six player of yeah. the game. Yeah, definitely. So uh, I think that wraps it up for this week's episode. I'm excited for uh, to see who's going to be finally in, and we could preview those actual playoff matchups uh, next week. Me too. Uh, what was I going to say? It'll be cool to see, um, like you said, not only the matchups, uh, but to see who just missed out. Well, we're not going to talk about them. No, no, no. But <laughs> ho hopefully, hopefully, you'll have reason to watch the show next week. And even if your team's out, you still watch. Bull predictions? Quick, quick. Bull predictions. Uh, D1, you. Oh, I wanted to go D1. Okay, that's what it is. Okay, so my bold prediction is Outlaws beat uh, A-Team. Yeah. And A-Team stick around. Cheering for Master Chiefs to win. Cheering for Master Chiefs to win. Yeah. Arnolds are up in this game. Oh, shit. <laughs> and then? Uh, Arnolds are up in this game. They're up seven. Vinny musters that drive. Uh, oh, actually, no parenthesis. Master Chiefs again scored 41 points and lost the game this past weekend. Like, the story of their literally... Literally, literally, literally the story of their season... <laughs> Real. But uh, that offense is too good. It's crazy. But you just get like an extra piece here and there on defense, maybe. Uh, convert some offensive skill set to defensive skill set. It's crazy. And uh, you'll be a D1 champion in no time. But uh, what I was saying, so yeah. 18 you to stick around. Hope for Massachusetts to beat Iron Wolves. Uh, 100%. Iron Wolves are up 7 points. Vinny and the gang muster up a, a great 
uh, drive under a minute to score on the last play of the game. Down one, they decide to go for two. I like it. They call a timeout. They huddle up. They discuss. I like it even more. Vinny takes the snap. Yeah. He looks at the Doe brothers on the sideline. And he takes a knee. <laughs> and that ends the game. And that's how Iron Wolves will go to the playoffs. <laughs> Can you imagine? Yeah, they call he a dart to Ashton. <laughs> no, but he could throw a dart to Ashton. Yeah, if yeah. he wanted to. Like, yeah. Look, if Master Chiefs are down to one point and it comes down to the, that, that last convert, I, I, I put like 100 bucks on Vinny to Ashton. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that comeback for his goal. He, he, yeah. he could... Tell you it's that, and they'll still score on it. Yeah, yeah. But uh, that, they call it bold because it's not likely to happen. Right. I, I don't think that's what Master Chief would do, obviously. Right, right. But uh, that would be crazy. <laughs> that would be hella crazy. Um, I'm going to go D2. Okay. Just because of how cool... Uh, and, uh, like It is technically the playoffs, right, in Division 2? Yeah, technically. So, um, secure top shooters, pocket rockets. I say that... Um, so, sorry, is Brady allowed to throw in this game? Yes. Okay, so I'm going to say Brady, Brady throws in the game. Because even though it's like a playoff game, it's still regular season rules that apply. Or exactly, okay, even though it's the last week. Yeah, because it is the last week of the regular season. So obviously the loser of this game will be out. Yes. You had asked me early on which teams... I mean, the only team Respect lost to was Secure Top Shooters. They're probably yeah. the ones that scare me the most. Although KOB is really close. And Pocket Rockets, when P.O. is feeling it, he's feeling it. If I had to give you one answer. I say Secure Top Shooters. But I think after this weekend, they're going to be eliminated. Really? P.O. Cannot beat them with six, five players, but it'll beat them with six? Beat them with six. Has a perfect game. Seven touchdowns. No interceptions. Throws for more touchdowns and incompletions in this game. Seven times seven. They went 47 to So they're hitting a lot of converts there, too. Yep. 47 to 38. Final score. Pocket Rockets win. P.O. gets game ball of the week. It's going to be an easy question, but seven touchdowns. Alexi over under four and a half. I was going to say he gets five, so over. Okay. I was going to say I'll, I was gonna say if that happens, Alexi gets eight. Eight of seven. Yeah, seven yeah. plus pick six. Yeah, yeah. Makes sense. <laughs> yeah, that's my whole prediction. This one. Trying to get, light some fire into Marvin's butt. <laughs> Good show. If he needed it. Great stuff. That was fun. Uh, yeah, so... Oh yeah, bring your water, folks, man. It, especially if it's hot like it was uh, this past Saturday. Yeah, for real. Or ice stay caps. Hi- hey, stay hydrated. Uh, ice cap actually dehydrates you, so you gotta give them some H2O as well. That's false. Uh, let us know if you have any questions. Uh, false student registrations in full form. Uh, ratings should be calculated next week. Anything else I forgot, let me know. See you on Saturday. Be there, be square.